Hello. What's happening? This is Neil Turpin, and this is Brian Tatler from Diamond Head. Hello there. And you're watching The Metal Voice. All right, we've got Brian Tatler here, and this is Neil Turbin for The Metal Voice. And uh, Brian, it's a pleasure to be here with you here at the Whiskey in California. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming, Neil. It's yeah. a pleasure to... We'll be going on in about an hour, so that's why I'm just warming up. You have to excuse me warming up. Oh, that's great. I'm sure the, <laughs> the fans will love watching, and uh, yeah, it's I'm always nice to learn. i my uh, modes. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, Brian, I mean, you started Diamond Head in... Was it 1976? 76. So this is 40 years. Wow. 2016. Incredible, really. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And I mean, there's no way on earth I would have presumed the band would still be going in 40 years' time. Because you can never see six months ahead, almost a year is a long time in, in rock and roll, as they say. But uh, to survive 40 years is, well, I, I, even I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So when you uh, were writing the album Borrow Time, I know we're going back into the archives here, but uh, after listening to the new album, you know, I, I thought there were some parallels, you know, in between the, some of the approach of, I don't know if it's songwriting or just the, the signature sound of Diamond Head. And is, is, do you see any similarities between... Yes. Uh, well, with, with all the past... Uh, you know, we've done. This is our seventh album, so I think there is little elements of all seven, of all six on this album number seven. Um, it's just I think we just had this brief uh, this time where we said the album should sound like a Diamond Dead album, and we've never really done that before. It was always about progression and let's let's see where else we can go. You know, rather than stick to one formula. Uh, we keep trying different things and um, it's a dangerous thing to do that is it's not so bad if you're mega successful uh, but if you if you're still trying to make your audience uh, it's probably not a good idea it's probably better to to try and establish your sound first but of course that's with the benefit of hindsight uh, but yeah there probably is uh, in the writing these days a little bit of playing to our strengths uh, I think I write in a certain way, I've got certain riffs uh, that I like, chord changes, chord progressions, and by, you know, using ones that sound very diamond dead and rejecting other songs that don't sound very diamond dead or possibly are too modern or maybe a bit like this band, that band, then we've whittled it down to pretty much an album that is, uh, you know, reminds people of the past. Now, of course, I believe that Diamond Head's had a big influence um, in metal in so many ways. I mean, not only in the new wave of British heavy metal, which you guys are a huge part of, but also in the second wave, I would guess you'd call it, the thrash metal wave, okay. which I was a part of. And of course, um, you know, bands like Metallica and Megadeth and of course Anthrax and Slayer. But I believe that, uh, you know, Exodus and Testament and other bands, the the Teutonic bands yeah. as well that are so amazing, you know, Creator and Destruction and Sodom and, but, and of course, on and on, we can Absolutely. keep going. There's so many bands that fill, fall into that category, but did you find it odd in any way, like when you first heard of a band covering your song? In other words, like you guys have been playing since 76 and all of a sudden there's this young band that comes along and they start playing I, I it. I didn't find it odd. I, I found it flattering because, of course, we knew Lars. Um, and then when he, when we got a copy of Creeping Death, the 12 inch single with uh, Am I Evil on the B side, which was their first cover, which is this is 1984. So, of course, they're not a big band yet. And in, in the Europe, they're signed to an, an indie label called Music for Nations. And so it didn't seem like the big deal it is to me because I just presume oh this is Lars's band and uh, they've covered the diamond some so we listened to it and we thought wow they've really gone to so much trouble to learn every little lick and, and you know they've done a very good job very respectful job of covering the song 
Um, so I was just really flattered, but I didn't think these are going to be the biggest band in the world or anything like that, or it's going to make a load of money or, you know, it, it was just, uh, it was really nice and, and in a way it was, it, it's just, um, if somebody else likes your song enough to want to cover it, to record it, you must be doing something right. So it was a kind of nod, uh, respect. I, I think it's amazing and I, I heard the song back in, when they played it back in uh, 1984 when I shared a rehearsal room with them. Oh, so right. you were before me then? <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe, but but it was like, you know, I thought it was their song, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's what they wanted people to think I, I thought it was like, <laughs> this, the riff was just had that that dark yeah. vibe to it. Yeah. And, and with that being said, I just thought it was interesting that, you know, we were talking a little earlier before the interview about, you know, some of the songs on, on the new album and, and the way it starts off and then the, the um, borrow time in other words before it gets to uh, am i evil so i i don't know i think it's almost like there's some different facets of diamond head in other words in the sound and you have a very melodic sound yeah as well as a very heavy sound which i find excellent i really yeah. that, that appeals to me because i'm a real big fan of nwo bhm yeah i i've always been a fan of uh, good vocals good singers and uh, yeah, ultimately, I want to write a good song. I don't just want to, you know, crush people. Like, so, you know, some bands, that's fine. That's what they want to do. But for myself, I want to write a good song. Um, it'll always start with the riff. The better the riff, the heavier the riff, the better. But it, it still needs a vocal. It needs a tune. You can't just, ah, you can't just scream on top of it because uh, that's not, well, it's not what I particularly like anyway. So. Uh, there it is. <laughs> cool. Well, um, it's almost like there's two different, you know, directions of sorts. Or would you say that there's even more than that within the, the framework of, of types of songs that you might write or just because yeah. that's kind of like you have this dynamic direction that's very um, melodic. And then Am I Evil? It's just it's kind of dark. It's kind of heavy. It's yeah. it kind of, you know, it's very riff oriented. And of course, the drums really you know, everything digs in the bass and the drums that's dig right. into that. Well, I mean, again, that song started with the riff. That's all I had once, just the simple. And then everything grew from there. Um, I can remember the drummer Duncan said he came up with the idea of putting the snare on the one. Um, it's been done before. Black Sabbath had already done it. So that, that was a good idea. And also that you then get the opportunity to switch it back to putting on the two. And so it, 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 you can have the same riff over and over again just by turning the drum beat round. round. Uh, and then also, I remember Sean saying he had to think of a suitably dark lyric to go with such a heavy riff. So it all came together. It took, did take a long time to write, though, Am I Evil? We, we'd spent over a year writing that song, and it grew from you know a small part, and we added sections and the intro with the solo, the end. You know, we just suddenly have a brilliant idea one day. Think, hmm, what if we could go back into the riff again at the end? You know, and uh, the song grew to seven minutes forty seconds, and it's got tempo changes, and it has got very good dynamics, and it's really hard to do that. Uh, I was probably better at doing that when I was twenty, because it's kind of the world's your oyster, isn't it? You naively, we can go anywhere than I am now. Uh, but I still try. I think dynamics are a big part of a, a successful band. Yeah, it's a, a pretty epic one, especially the, the length of the song and just yeah. the, the impact of that song. And of course, it's it's horrible to define a band by one song. You know, if you were to <laughs> define a band like Queen, for example, by Bohemian Rhapsody, when there's so many yeah, other and songs. Yeah, uh, with, with Smoke in the Water. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to pigeonhole anyone, but... I think we do get that a bit. We do get people come to gigs and they go, I know this one, I know this one, you know, I know I'm my evil. Uh, it is our big song, and uh, I mean, I'm glad to have it because at least we've got one big song. Hey, you wrote it. <laughs> That's exactly. Cool. Uh, but, you know, hopefully people enjoy the whole set. Yeah, that's why I wanted to, you know, start off by talking about, you know, kind of the other direction, which to me is really actually super melodic and amazing. And, you know, in hearing um, the singer that you have since 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I think it's it's just incredible uh, the sound of Diamond Head these days. I think you guys are stronger than ever. In it, in fact, wasn't there a time that you guys uh, had? I don't know if you split up or you just stopped for a while. Or we did split up twice. Yeah. Okay. We split up in 1985 uh, when we got we got dropped by the record label in '84, and then kind of everything slowed down to a to a stop. You know, uh, and then we reformed in 1990. And split again in '94, and reformed again in 2000, and we've we've been going since then. So it's been going, you know, for a long time, but with with two small gaps. Uh, but yeah, this is a very strong lineup now. This this band, everybody's so good in this band now. Maybe we can introduce the other guys since yeah, we got them in the yeah. room. They're all listening. They, we'd love to. <laughs> we'd love to get you guys on on the. Interview Hello. here. And hey. also, Dean just stepped in the room. All right, cool. How you doing, man? Great nice to meet you. you. Good. So, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm Dean Ashton. I play bass <laughs> and sing back and forth and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, lead back and vocals. I am Raz. <laughs> I'm the dude who sings and talks to the crowd and has some banter once in a while and stop the fights whenever that happens. <laughs> <laughs> we got the main man. I'm Carl, here. how are you? Hi, everybody. Thanks, Carl. Do drums. <laughs> You do what's left, don't you? Though? <laughs> you do everything. <laughs> I don't do anything else yet. Your crew's here from Starbridge. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah. It's hard to drop your pen. So, so oh, how's, how's the tour been so far in terms of, uh, you know, traveling and uh, a lot you know, of traveling. different cities that you've been playing? What's Carl worked out we've done 10,000 miles just in, in America. Wow. So, yeah, it's gone, it's gone well. Uh, it's, we've been up to Canada. It's really strange to land in San Francisco and it's sunny and we've got t-shirts out and all And then as we went up to Canada, snow and, and icy roads and poor. Um, and then you come back down and uh, the snow disappears and, and we're back here in LA and it's nice again. So it's really strange to have all that extremes in one country, but it is such a massive country, isn't it? Compared to England, you know, where we live, uh, that you, you've got those extremes of weather. It's just, yeah, you know, the distances are phenomenal as well. Uh, well, we got to see some good landscapes. We did, you know. we did about 10 hours drive the other day, didn't 12. we? 10, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, we had about 12 hours. Oh, don't remember where from where. No, I've <laughs> uh, lost track. Yeah, we, we had that, that big stint of 16 gigs and, uh, you know, after that it's all kind of become a blur. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't know what day it is, don't know hardly what year it is. I just know that we're in uh, in the US currently and back in LA, ready for whiskey round number two. Yeah. With house band. Yeah. Which <laughs> mm. <laughs> bloody residency here. <laughs> I'm damned it started in a very, you know, simple way in my bedroom. Uh, we didn't have a drum kit, we, you know, we made our own drum kit up out of biscuit tins and plastic tub and all that kind of thing. And we'd just record everything straight onto cassette. So you'd have, you know, Duncan in the corner and myself with my brother's guitar and Sean singing directly into the cassette. And that's how we learned to write, by just making up songs on the spot, basic, you know, songs and, and recording them, listening to them back and thinking, that's good, that bit's no good, we'll just do another bit there. And we just kept doing that over and over. And, and uh, you know, we had no idea even how to get a gig. I think in the first year, we didn't do any gigs. Second year, we did one gig. And then the third year, we probably did four gigs, you know. And even then, were hard work. You know, we had, there was no rehearsal room. There was, we didn't know where to play. We'd end up playing in the pub, you know, on a, in the window and the carpet. For, 50p or something so it's just you know basic start from the beginning and you know you'd look at a band like Led Zeppelin and think how on earth do, do we get from playing in my bedroom to <laughs> having a post to selling 10 wall. million records how's that yeah. going to happen you know you get on a spaceship <laughs> yeah. what's that you get on a spaceship that's how you and they had a spaceship or a blimp <laughs> no, but it, you know, like you say, Brian, that's how you started out. But interestingly enough, that's how we, for this album, etc., in 2014, I, I was very adamant that we need to get back to that methodology because yeah. that's how Diamond Head works. And that's how there's a certain kind of chemistry of how everything then flows from there. So we didn't go, go to his bedroom though. No, you know, very gone now. It's yeah. been sold. But the, uh, <laughs> 
but we did that in the studio with four walls and just the yeah. guys yeah. and riffs and tracking everything every session listening back reworking saying that's crap that's not and we developed a, uh, a brief of what is diamond head we kind of had a good idea of what is yeah the true nature or sound of diamond head and uh, then we kind of used that as a reference to say yes or no to whatever we wrote and it was very brutal, but it was also a very yeah. effective way to just cut the crap from the gold, so to speak. That's right, and and it, it also meant that you couldn't get precious about the song. Yeah. Somebody coming along with a song yeah. that didn't fit the brief, didn't fit, it didn't sound like Diamond Head. It's easy enough to say that's not really working, wow. and it would just have to go and mm -hmm. ego, leave your ego by the door. Yeah. We don't really have much of ego in this band, anyways. It's no, it's all about the music. Yeah. yeah, all about just making good music. And, and as you, you know, I think as Ras come, has come in fresh, he's been able to, uh, you know, have a fresh take on it. You know, I'm probably too close to it sometimes. But Ras has been able to come in and go, look, that's very Diamond Ed. This doesn't sound like Diamond Ed. And, and so it's black and white to, to Ras. I might also just be my nationality. Could be. Thinking black Whatever and white it is. And analytical to the core. <laughs> to the core of everything, Brian. Whatever it is, it's worked. Yeah. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with you guys, and you know I had the opportunity to play with you when Raz just joined the band back in uh, yeah. Germany at the yeah. Headbangers That's Open Air. Yeah. Yeah. 2014, that was cool, and you guys rocked it. I mean, it was Thank awesome you. to be there. It's better now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it has increased in it's quality. Better now. Yeah, everybody's settled in together. It's all yeah. it's all firing it's and all. It's better now. Yeah. That was treading water. Uh, no, not treading water. Just feeling the you know the water. Yeah, that, that was technically my audition. It was in a way. I didn't think of it that way. Say. But that, you, you never told me that was the audition, but that was kind of like, you let's see if he can do this live. Yeah. What's he like that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had, I had to craft my way around that and get to know how everyone else was and how the dynamic was yeah. on the stage. So, so what we that was, that was an interesting game. So, so what's the next steps for Diamond Head after this tour? In other words, are you guys going to, I mean, you have a brand new album out this year. So, I mean, are, are you going to get back and write some more? Are you going to... Put another album out in 2017. Are you going to tour some more? Or I think first back? step, first step is a bit of rest. Christmas, Christmas yeah. Holidays. Get Christmas out of the way and make sure the families are happy as well. Yeah. You know they need some some time, and uh, then we'll see. We'll have we've got some gigs lined up for uh, next year. We're playing Leyendas del Rock in Spain, Andalusia, I think it is. Um, we've got some other gigs that I can announce and talk about right now. Um, and we are looking at other touring next year if we yeah. can get it to work. But that's really up to Carl to kind of suss out the logistics of doing all that. And uh, you know, we will probably start just the same process, but you know, we try not to stress about these things. It has to flow organically. When you put too much stress and pressure on it, you know, the process of writing good creative stuff can be a bit, you know, faulty. So we yeah, will. there's no rush for us. No. Uh, there's we no. We spent labels. about six months on the last one in yeah. writing. Yeah. Uh, spread out over six months, but we would probably do something similar. Yeah. Just we'll look know. at refining the process. It'd be, it'd be it'd be kind of ready when it's ready. Kind yeah. of thing. I think we're not gonna. There's no body saying, "Come on, come on, make a quick, no. make another album." There's no, no need for that. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, but I have one more really important question. It's about your guitar. Okay. I know that most people don't get into that, but I'm totally into these Les Pauls here. <laughs> and that is a special guitar because it's Brian Tatler's. Thank you. Can we see the back of that headstock maybe? It's got Grovers on. I took the Gibson machine heads off. It's a 1996 okay. Gibson Les Paul oh, That's okay. nice. That's the new one as well. Pretty actually. one and uh, nice yeah, burst. Nice so so what's, what, what's the reason you're playing that guitar as opposed to some other Les Paul you might have? Uh, I, I've been using the same Les Paul for years, but it got it did so many gigs. I reckon I, it's done. I've done over a thousand gigs with it, and it was starting to wear out. And it, the nut, it had to have a new nut, and the, this, the knot fell off, and all sorts of things. This bit's broke, so I'm, it's at home at the moment, sort of in recuperation. And I thought I'd bring this one out for, for this tour because this this one, you know, I've had this for probably 15 years or something, uh, and it hasn't done that many gigs, so. I thought it was about time I did a bit of it to keep. 
So I do have one other question. I know you guys got to get ready for your show, but I wanted to just ask, um, because you know, you're a huge part of the new wave of British heavy metal, and um, you know, you have, you, you've played with other bands that are part of that. So I just wondered what that might have, you know, if, if you've kind of, um, I mean, some you may have played a, a couple of times, and some of you know, like Def Leppard or Saxon or, I mean, you okay, we played, we've never played with Def Leppard, but we did meet them once they came to see us at a club in, in Sheffield. Raven? In the early days. Uh, but we've never played with Def Leppard. We've played with Iron Maiden. We've, we toured with Raven. We toured the US with Raven. Uh, and we've done a couple of other festivals and things. Uh, Angel Witch, uh, Girls School, probably you know half a dozen times with Girls School. And a few of the other bands as well over the years. Frame Mantis and, you know, the usual suspects so it's it's i think it's fascinating um genre new average heavy metal that, that all these bands who all in my opinion sounded different from each other uh were unaware of each other until sounds magazine uh kind of made it into a scene uh, a next big thing kind of uh, idea and called it the new average heavy metal and then we were all suddenly aware of each other through this magazine, but suddenly, oh look, Vardis, you know, oh look, Saxon, you know. And uh, I, Damon had fit right in, we were the perfect age and we'd been going long enough to to uh, to get involved with that. And we're, uh, we're in the, uh, the, the issue number one of Kerrang, like as a sort of band to watch kind of piece, you know. So, so yeah, we were just, uh, time, you know, timed, perfectly for, for the new wave of Shiver Metal. And it did us a lot of good. I, of course, realized it was a, the perfect opportunity to get a record deal. Do you have a lot of relationships with people from bands that you did back, let's say, in those days that so carried over? I've, I've been in contact with Tigers of Pantang recently. Uh, and we do Blitzkrieg and, uh, uh, who's that the band? Witch Pine, you know. Oh, yeah. We've, we've had contact with those sort of guys, which, you know, they've come and supported us. Also Bardis, Bardis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we did a gig with Bardis, didn't we? Yeah, not another band. That's nice so cool. Guys, yeah. So cool to speak with so you. So it's great. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of mutual respect, really, for, for any, any band that can be going for 30, 40 years or, or even come back and, you know, relight the fire, you know. Break up three or four times and be back rocking and bizarre, just sometimes. like you were back and in I think, why the not? days. Oh, why not? We met a band called Mitra in Germany mm -hmm. who were from Liverpool and uh, they just reformed and uh, they were excited to be out, and, you know, touring again. Well, it's an, you're an inspiration to, to me and to all metal fans. I think it's great to, to you know, do what you, your passion is and yeah. to to, you know, get, getting a chance to play a gig with you guys was really cool and I was blessed to have that opportunity and I'm, I'm blessed you. to be here tonight and looking forward to you guys uh, annihilating the whiskey that goes over here. <laughs> no pressure. In Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you so much. No Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for coming out.